Hi, it's Nelson from Creekwood Aquatics, and today I just got a couple updates. Um, I ended up expanding my beta enclosures. Uh, when I first got the betas, I kept them in these 32 ounce uh, beta containers. Um, I did want to provide more space for them. Uh, the cups are fine if you're going to keep them here on a temporary basis, um, a few days, maybe a week or two, um, but it's not something that you want to keep long term. Um, they're efficient, they're economical, but they're not efficient and economical with my time. Um, keeping them in these small containers requires me to do about a daily water change on all 78 containers. And um, that's a lot of time, that's a lot of work. Um, and I want something to be, I want a solution that's gonna be, again, economical, efficient, but also great for the fish. And that's where I landed on these containers. And I got these from Amazon. I got about 25 of them for about $97. And I'm planning on when the fish shed is ready, which we're, we're really close and I am gonna do an update on that soon. Um, but I do wanna have a wall of betas and my goal is to have 100 containers that I can have full of betas. Because um, 100 will be enough for most of the betas that I'm gonna import. It'll also have space for some of maybe the higher end looking ones that I breed. Um, and everybody else, I'll keep the females in a sorority system and the males I'll keep together. But since I'm breeding them, they're gonna be younger. Um, I can keep them together for a little bit before I have any uh, any issues, but yeah, I think I think 100 tanks uh, should be fine. Uh, but I do want to highlight some of them because some of them are are really cute. Uh, like A18 here. I call this one Harley Quinn. Um, trying to find that right camera angle, but the, he's a galaxy. His his patterns are phenomenal. Has little diamond shapes. He's a uh, multicolor. He's a really good looking one. I don't know. Yeah, and then again, these these black lights are just so cool. <laughs> I just fed them Daphne, so they're uh, they're still hunting. They're still doing their thing. I paired up some of the purple coppers uh, two days ago and um, I actually got offspring that counted about maybe 50, 60 eggs and that's okay for this new pairing because it was an extremely young male and an extremely young female and the male just kind of wasn't getting it in the beginning. Uh, he built his bubble nest, um, he was dancing for the female, I introduced them and then he just went after, he just went and went. And, um, it took him a little bit and uh, I almost pulled the female out a couple times thinking like he's gonna he's gonna stress her he's gonna stress her real bad um, but eventually the male kind of just kind of just got it uh, he started acting sweet he was able to embrace the female um, he collected his eggs but I pulled the female out immediately as soon as I saw eggs in the nest I was like you're done so I pulled her, now she's in the sorority tank with my other female betas. Um, but so far he's been a good dad. He's been tending his eggs, the eggs hatched. Um, I am gonna put a small clip as I'm talking of those babies. Um, but I really enjoy the purple coppers. I think the purple coppers is not a color that I've seen personally uh, with the betas. And um, I'm, I'm really enjoying them. And I actually do have a couple available um, I have A19, who is a female purple copper. She looks just like the other female that I just recently bred. And then I think A5 and A6. Yeah, A5 is a purple copper. He's gotten a unique look to him. Uh, 
He's cute. He, he does have a wonderful personality. Look at him swimming. I, I love these enclosures. Like they just have so much more room to, to swim and to exercise. It's, it's so great for them. I can't wait to have the, the hundred rack. Here's the other purple copper. He's uh, similar to the male that I bred. Um, real sleek, real stream, streamlined. He has those really nice colors on him. So I'm really excited to see what their offspring come out looking like. And since those two are my personal breeders, um, they look good, I'll breed them again. And then I'll retire them and I'll try to find a new pair. You know what's funny? It's only with the betas that I'm so particular and so like obsessive the, the order they go in. Um, if it was anything else in my life, like my pipettes or my fishnets or my socks, they would be all over the house in random places. Like, hey, look, ah. <laughs> random pipette just hanging out. Um, and I just, I just put it in a spot that's random that I'm gonna forget about. But <laughs> that's just the quirks of uh, being me. But um, yeah, when it comes to the betas, especially the ones on the marketplace, like I want to make sure I know where everybody is. So from one to twenty, you're 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 here and you're accounted for, and you're getting checked on every day, and you're getting fed, and you're getting your water changed, because I do not want anything going wrong with these babies. Um, since I got them, I, it's been a huge learning experience. Like, I've been in this hobby for over 20 years. I've worked in multiple pet stores. I, I ran aquariums. <laughs> I've, done, I've done it all. Um, but, when I first when I first brought the betas here, um, I run my house a little bit cooler than most people. I run my house at around seventy to seventy two degrees because for me it's cheaper to cool my house, to cool my reef tank and my axolotls than it is to put chillers on these individual systems. And plus, I like the house kind of cold. Um, but then I, I I put heat into all my other all my other setups. Um, but with the betas, the betas like to be, they like to be warmer. And um, I wasn't hitting those temps and a lot of them were sitting on the floor. Some of them were being sad and the colors were, were off and it was really kind of worrying. So I decided let's move them into the guest bedroom, closing off the vents, adding a space heater. We're cooking this room. So this room's around 78, 80 degrees. And since we've done that, the betas have been way more active. They've been eating more, they've colored up. And now with the increased water volume, now they're swimming, now they're exploring their little environment. They're looking at each other, they're flaring out, they're doing all the things that betas should do. And it, it's really exciting to see that. And honestly, I've been getting really attached to them. I, I love betas. Betas are one of those fish that no matter how long I've been in the hobby, I always kind of circle back to them. Um, the first fish I ever remember having in my life was uh, were five neon tetra, and then my parents bought me a koi, and we kept it in a 10 gallon tank. And I, re I remember him as much as I can, but I remember having betas. I remember going to the local pet shops, going to Petco, and you bought a beta for five dollars. You brought it home and you kept it in a little in this guy. But you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You should give your betas at least two and a half gallons or, or larger, um, with heat, sponge filters, and all that stuff. I, I have plans. These guys are going to be on a system soon. Um, but yeah, I always remember having the betas and then in high school, uh, when I worked at Animals and Things, like first time I ever got introduced to a crown tail beta back in 2007, uh, when I first started working and I bought those and 
I heard rumors about giant betas and never seen one in real life until a few months ago. I actually purchased my first pair of giant betas. I successfully bred them and they're actually coming up and I am going to do an update on them because my giant beta babies are about yay big right now. They haven't colored up. I'm waiting for them to color up so I can actually be like, oh, look at that. But um, until then, giant betas are in their own little project system over there. Um, but yeah. So what I'm trying to get to is beta are fish that I always kind of circle back no matter what I do, whether I'm doing um, African cichlids, whether I'm doing discus or other South American species, the axolotls, the reef. Um, what am I currently working on? Uh, the pupfish in the front yard, you know, the Daphnia cultures, all that stuff, like all that stuff's cool, but I do end up coming back to beta. So we got invited to the convention in Houston and you know, of course I'm gonna have again my Daphnia, phytoplankton, rotifers, all that stuff. But I wanted to make a bigger impact. I wanted to have more things available on hand so I can show people, so I can sell people, I can talk to, uh, I can make connections. Um, and then I decided that I'm going to import something and the thing that I wanted to import were betas. Because again, huge part of my, my hobby, um, I, I do love these fish. I think they're very unique. Um, the colors, the patterns, the behaviors. Um, they're just an amazing fish. Just an amazing fish. I mean, look at this guy. <laughs> you know, the sad part is that, again, I, I have grown attached to all these betas, but I know they're destined to go to other people and have different forever homes. And selfishly, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that when I eventually do sell the fish and let them go, that, um, that maybe people would be nice enough to send me photos of their enclosures, their setups, and just the betas doing goofy little beta things like sleeping on little logs and stuff because, uh, again, I, I have grown very attached to them. I'm glad that I brought them in. I'm glad that I had this experience. I'm glad that I'm going to build this new beta system, this new beta rack that's going to hold 100 betas, and they're going to be a fish that I'm going to continuously bring in. I'm, I'm so happy that, <laughs> that I'm actually taking steps to fulfilling the dream that I've always had. And the dream is to eventually open my own fish store and being able to create a community in Floresville of uh, like-minded people who love fish, want to keep aquariums, want to learn more about them, want to expand their horizons, and we all have to start somewhere. Betas are really easy fish to start with. Um, but yeah, I, I've been in this hobby for over 20 years. And again, I've managed aquariums, I've managed pet stores. Um, I've, done, I've done it all. And I think it's time to take that experience and build something for myself, for my family, and for the future. And something that I have full control of. Something that, you know, if I want to import 78 betas, I can. I can. And I can find them homes and hopefully people will love them as much as I do. Anyway, this is Nelson with Creekwood Aquatics. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.